Hey everybody, welcome to part two of the vlog. As you'll have seen uh, the last one, we were recoloring our gaming mat. So we have a before and after for you here. So this is how it originally was. It was lovely, nice step to rain, a little too yellow for what we were trying to do because we're even at Normandy. Yeah. So what we did was, let's do this one. Let's get like a full half. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Half versus half. Yes. So what we've done is we've taken our furniture die and given it two good coats here, okay? Yeah. So the first one was a nice big overpass to tone everything down. And then the second one, you'll notice, you see between these sort of rocky areas, this went really darker. So we focused in on that and then give it a nice little bit of blending. So that's how that's turned out. I'm pretty happy with so it. So one generic pass. One generic pass and then a focused pass with Where feathering. It sort of went Yeah, so if, if you look, so you see these areas in between here. Yeah. You can see they're a bit darker. Yeah. That's me going in and just going a bit heavier there and then feathering it out and cool. just blending it through nice. uh, with the big air gun. What are we doing now? Uh, today, we need to start focusing on layouts, which means we need to make roads. Roads! So, uh, I have been, what I hope is mildly clever, and done some of these. So I've done a couple of road layouts just to get us going, and I've taken some of our big rolls of brown paper to cut out some rough templates of where we want our uh, roads to be laying out. What we're going to use for that is the cobblestone wallpaper that you'll have seen us use before. Uh, we're also going to do some more city style stuff that I hope you've seen as well. We're hoping to do two of these and as we move up and around you can see we've got a nice bit of French countryside here with the chateau. Uh, behind you there we've actually got a nice ruined castle. And my hope is I should be able to 3D print enough to do a full ruined castle, which will look pretty sweet. Which is cool. Here's the next layout. Mm -hmm. We'll just go down through them all. So Justin, you've basically gone round and just put out ideas of what you think the road should be like for each table. Yes, because I, it's one of those things. You can you can go to Guild Force 9, or sorry, the guys at Battlefront. Yeah. You can actually pick up some nice modular road segments from them, but I wanted to do something a bit more organic. Well, we got a lot to cover. Yeah. So we need to go pretty quickly. And like Justin said, we found this wallpaper oh, exactly. a few months back. It's uh, it's like a B and Q wallpaper. Probably some other places sell it, but I hope you can see that mm -hmm. it's it's very glittery. But up close, it looks awfully like cobblestones. Exactly, and our last layout here is something that I'm trying to do is very, very out in the backwoods. So I've been going nuts with the 3D printer. So I've been printing walls. I've been printing like a nice French farm. I'm probably going to do another yeah. one of those in there. And in fact, even on here, this church is a 3D print from the guys at Printable Scenery. We've been using them for a lot of this stuff, which has turned out really good. That's very sweet. Hold on, let me turn that around for you. Yeah. Well, it all goes one. <laughs> Look at hey, that. Yeah. And the tops come off. See? The roof should pull off if John hadn't glued them on. Hey! So you can get all of your infantry bases in there and actually have them firing out. That's sweet. I like yeah. that. What I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, and you, I see you've got a big castle thing on. Yeah, so I've got big room tower. So I've got three more of these to do, but again, it all pulls apart and you can get infantry and stuff inside them, which right. is great. These roads, Justin. Yes. Now, original idea that was kicked around in here was. Um, like you could take these paper things and just stick this down or cut this out in those well, shapes. Yeah, my initial thought was I was going to take and just glue the back of this and glue it to the back of that. And then that would give me just my full template to cut out. Yeah, okay. You have shot me down on that one and came I up with think, something better. I, th I think we need weight and stuff because uh -huh. that's nice and all, but um, it'll be very disposable and it'll get chucked away at the end of the boot camp. Yeah. So I was thinking if we do this similar to something I did a few weeks back where we actually use... Um, Self-adhesive carpet tiles. Mm -hmm. Do you have That's any? the way to go. Do you have any set? Do we have any? Of course we did, because we sent Warren to B&Q <laughs> today to get loads. Let's go there. up this way. Right, so, our flash idea is to use two types, right? So there's these big long ones that are around two feet, right? Uh -huh. So they're supposed to look like, um, you know, fake wood floors. Yeah. So we have that type, and we have also, whoa, Whoa, ah, never mind. We also have this type, which is, you know, your bog standard sort of nasty, nasty kitchen tile. <laughs> or these, bathroom tile. I, I don't rate these if you're going to actually do your house up. How do you get them open? Would you like a blade? Yeah, terrible. Because here's a recommendation I have. You see if you need blades for a hobby project like this. This is from the local pound store. So if you're in America, it's a dollar store. Grab something like this, good sharp blades that you can just break off and keep a good sharp end on them. Because if we're cutting through all of these, I'd say our blades are gonna start blunting reasonably quickly. All right, now, 
the great thing about these is they already have a self-adhesive back. Well here, let me do you this one. You just peel a wee bit like that, and then you can take the wallpaper and stick it on. Here, let's, let's right do one. Good idea, let's just do one. As it all falls apart. If you peel that way, I'll peel this way. All right, I'll meet you in the middle. So they come with this paper back in. All you do is just peel it off. Oy, there we go. All right, all right, so I'll take this out of your way. All right, roll out your wallpaper. Watch this for magic. Are Make we sure on? you're at least six inches back. Back from where? The edge. Are you happy at that? Yeah, I'm happy at that. Drop it down. That's not six inches. That's like six <laughs> over, centimeters. It's over six inches. <laughs> That's like six centimeters, man. All right, so give it a good press down. Make sure you've got no air bubbles. And then take your handy dandy knife. Yeah. Don't cut your fingers off. Take your hand away from there, Lloyd, or cut yeah. your fingers off. I'm ready for you. But is the ER ready for you? Bring it. And okay, there you go. And it's just a matter of trimming this back very quickly. And just a little bit of thinning here. Okay. Shazam! Thank and you, so man. And so there, you have your first section of what's going to become our root. Now, we are not just laying down big square lumps of this. I think we can still use my templates. Yes, it'd be much nicer if it wiggled. I like a bendy root. So if we take this over, yes, the idea will be Let's 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 go for this table. Yes. Right. The idea will be to put a few of these down and, yeah. and actually have a wiggly sort of yeah. road texture cut out of it. Yeah. Now, uh, the one thing to remember is our road width is about three inches, right? Yes. So we kind of need to be careful to make sure that it comes that nice three inch wide, and we have to keep it consistent. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. Well, it doesn't have to be entirely consistent. Because uh, it can wiggle a little bit. I don't know, my, 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 my inner builder is just tweaking a wee bit going, it doesn't have to be consistent. It has to be consistent when you get to a join point. Mm. Like, because this will be built of say one, yeah. two, three, a four square. Bits, you know, it has to be consistent then. But we'll get yeah. further into that, you know. Yeah. We'll cover that in more detail when we come to do it. Yeah. The well, good thing is with this particular pattern, we're not worried about things meeting perfectly. All right, so we know what the plan for the roads are. So we pressed on, we got outside, made loads of bits. Yeah. We've been yeah. painting them up. Yes, so uh, as you can see here, this is what they look like after they've went through the process that we've came up with. Yes. So Lloyd, like, what is the process? Well, just, just before we got into that, before we went outside, we kind of laid out on the tables the bits that we were gonna use, yeah. and we gave them little numbers. So as we would know, that's yeah. F1, what's that one? Uh, this is F3. And I have F2, so that's a complete set. So if you're ever doing like lots of tables simultaneously, yes, that's a good idea. Right, yeah. so. The other thing I'm gonna do is, after we cut them to shape, I'm gonna mark it one, one, yeah. two, two. Yeah, so you so know, know which end. what's connecting to where. You know which end docks to what. Yes. Perfect, right. Now, how do we get to this step? Yes. Right, so we're gonna use the big air gun. Yes. The big compressor that you guys were using in part one. Yeah. That you used to change the color of the fields. Yes. Right, so to do that, we took some acrylic white and some acrylic brown. This is a burnt umber. Yeah, this is from the works if you're in the UK, but yeah. I'm sure if you're in America, you can find it at any local like, hardware or craft store. There's nothing special about this. It's just white acrylic paint and brown acrylic paint. Yeah. And all I did was I took uh, two parts white yes. to one part brown. Mm -hmm. I stuck it in a pot noodle. Yep. I mixed it about, I yep. put water in. We yep. kept mixing it about until we got roughly the consistency of milk. Uh, it was a bit thicker than milk. It was a bit thicker than milk. It was. See, because it's going through the big air compressor, you, you, it's not like an airbrush where you have to be so careful of it, where it has to be the exact right consistency. We were fit to be a bit more rough and ready with it this yeah. way. So testing wise, all we were doing was stirring it and then sort of lifting the brush up. Seeing how it dripped. To see how it dripped. Yeah. Okay. Then we took that bad boy, loaded it into the compressor. Yeah. Got to work. Well, I got to work. You got to work with your <laughs> skills, man. I seen you go shh, 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 I, I do find it funny just how often the old building trade skills come in handy. So we did one coat. Yes. It was a glorious day, so we've left it to dry. Yeah. And then what, we did another coat? Uh, yeah, I think we took like uh, three coats at the end up. So it took us about three coats yeah. to get from glittery. Hold yes. on, let me give you an example. Glittery to this nice sort of 
muted sandy brown. Let me give you a big sample. Oh, there we go. That's even better. <laughs> so before. Yes. And after. Yes. Okay. And we've managed to keep the detail pretty well because we did keep the paint that nice thinness. Yes. I probably would have liked that maybe to be a bit brighter. Yeah, although I did notice you were sponging it a little bit while you were doing it, just where you noticed it pulling. Yeah, sometimes the like just too much settled in one place and I was concerned that it might just yeah, fill get in all marks. the detail. So like you say, I just took the sponge and just moved it across yeah. because I knew we were going to come back over and do another coat yeah. and then we would have a nice even finish yes. like this. Yes. Now I did try brushing this on before we went out on the compressor. Yeah. And I was like, oh, let's just use the compressor for this. Yeah. But if you are going to do it at home, a great way to do it is you get paint, load up your brush. Hold on, uh, let me pretend this is a brush. Oh, this is a brush. <laughs> Mix your paint, load up your brush, go do 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 like that. Then take a sponge. Go on, chuck me that sponge. Fantastic. Eel. Right? Imagine this is loaded up with paint, and then do that to get it into all the gaps. Yeah. And then do that. So as it all goes in one direction. Right, and you're using the soft side, not the scrub side. Yes, and the reason I'm using a sponge is because if you use a brush, you, you can just get, get brush marks, very yeah. obvious brush marks with the sponge. Far more forgiving. <laughs> right, with that, let's move on and start talking about what we're going to do wash-wise with this. All right, with our road sections sprayed up and drying outside, it's a lovely hot day. Yeah, yeah. Should be no problem getting dried out there. Yeah, yeah. We need to think about the next step, which is giving a wash to the whole, you know, like to the whole surface as yeah. it gets done into the gaps. Because if yeah. you look here, it's nice, it's cobbly. Mm -hmm. But what's wrong with it, just? It's not dirty enough. Yeah, it doesn't have enough depth to it. It's a bit flat looking. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think, Justin? What do we uh, make? We need to make a wash. We need to make a wash. Homebrew wash. Right. One on one from Lloyd. We've got acrylics and stuff here. I personally think the black's going to be too dark. I think just a touch of it, but we can give it a test. With our wee strip, we're going to test things. You're going to strip, Lloyd? I'm Not on camera, strip. please. Let's see. Let's get... Ooh. Burnt, burnt umber. Let's get the burnt umber. Yeah. Right, so... Pot noodle. Clean. One drop of burnt umber. What yeah. do you think, Justin? Uh, a little more. You think more than that? Just a touch more than that. Because we're going to put this through the compressor again. Yeah, we're going to put it through the, the air gun. No, it's yeah, that's good. We want this to be pretty watery. Yeah, we want this to be super thin and we <laughs> want to break the surface tension. So Ooh. I would recommend a little dot of fairy liquid. Nice. Now, like Justin says, there's like, if you've ever seen a, a drip of water, it sort of sits on the surface. Yeah. If you put stuff like fairy liquid into it, it, it has a chemical thing where it just... It breaks the surface tension. And it just goes... Like T2. Yeah, you know, you know, you know when I, T2 like died at the end. See, I was going to go a little bit more Attenborough saying, you know, whenever you see like a fly landing on water and it stands on the water because of the surface tension, it doesn't break it. Nah, T2. Dead T2. Right. Let's put right. one drop in. Yeah, just what a do you little. Think? Oh, just a little. Think. Yeah, that's enough. It's Can literally it? just to change the chemical makeup slightly. All right. Now, let's dribble some water down in there. Actually, yeah. I'll just use this. I'll probably actually just use this because we need a lot of water, don't we? we? We need to thin this down <laughs> a lot. In goes the water! How much are we looking for? We are looking this to be super, super thin. Right, oh, hang on. Oh, oh so I make a mess the place. You're making a mess. Right, here. You swizzle that. I'll get a stirring stick. Yeah, I should have one sitting about there. The real key with this is do not make it bubbly. So you got a stir stick there for yeah, me, Lloyd? Two seconds, I'll clean it off. Yeah, give it here. This is from our last set of paint that we were working on. Do not make it bubbly. Is this because the fairy liquid's in it? Is that why you're saying that? Yes. Tilt it forward there. Let's see what we're doing. Is it, is it succeeding? Are there bubbles? There are bubbles. Let's see. Bubbly. I think it'll be all right. Yeah. We're going to need lots of it though. Yeah. Let's try and get this to the consistency we're going to put through the air gun. Uh, go ahead and just mix it all the way up. Oh. Stop there. So, uh, this, I think this is way too thin. That's right. fine. We'll put some more water in. It's too thin! It's I fine. need more paint! We'll put some more water in. And the reason I'm doing that is because of this particular stage, Justin. Yeah. I want to do this in one pass. I understand. I do not want, I don't know why I'm putting my fairy liquid up. I don't want to have to come back no, and, and no. make another wash because the paint. It's much easier to match 
like paint because you can overspray and repaint yeah. and stuff like that. Tide oh, lines are what you're looking to avoid yeah. here. When you're trying to match two different washes and you've mixed them at two different times, yeah. right. unless you're super yeah. accurate. Cut this. It's going to be very difficult. This is still too thin. This more. is still too thin. Give me more. More, he says. More. As I missed the side. I would say you should have gone to Specsavers, but he's already wearing glasses. I don't go to Specsavers, no. This video is not sponsored by Specsavers. Every video with you in it is sponsored by Specsavers. I don't think so. Right. Uh, this is getting pretty close now. Another splodge, do you think? Yeah. Better in that time. Oh, that noise. Do you know what'll help? If we take the bubbles off the top with a bit of yes. kitchen towel, watch this. Right? Because at the minute, we can't see squat. Yeah. Take, take your wee jobby out there. Oh, look at that. It's pretty good. So, at that stage, we can quite possibly just take our brush and just do our test piece a little bit. Do we test? See what we get. Mm. Nothing. A little bit, very we, little. We get nothing. We need to hammer the pigment in here. I had a little black, I think, to darken it down, but. Let's get that whacked in there. Whoa. 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 Oh, that's the noise. Sounds like him after a night at the Chinese. Looks like we have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll go again. Yep. That's what our test piece is for. Yeah. Because we don't look stupid going outside. Let me get that right down in there. Yeah. Oh, hello. That's a bit better. Although I think you may have just had a big splodge at the bottom. In fact, give it a brush. For I, a I think that's what the problem is. Mix with a brush. I'm gonna mix with this brush because I think all the pigments just sitting at the base. Yeah. But the color is a lot darker now. Yeah. Hold on. Let's take that off again. Whoa. All right. Nice. Right. Try it on a clean back. Right. Okay. Much better. Much, much better. I think we can run that now. Do you think we can I move it about? I think we can run that now. Because if it pulls and stuff, I guess we could literally, maybe, like we could lift we the could board. We could lift and just let it run. But yeah, you can see a, a complete difference. That's got a lot more definition to it now, which is what we want, a lot more depth. That's what so we're trying I think to that's good. Do you want to put a tiny bit of black in? Uh, I think we're good as ours. If you want, we can try it. Although tiny, I think tiny that's, little bit. That's the new pot. That's the old pot. I'll let you do it. That way, if we mess it up, it's on you. Experimental. Did you see that? If you blinked, you missed that. One tiny little blob. Give it some up down action there, Justin. Just wiping the sides. Up down action, Justin. Up down action, Justin. <laughs> In other words, show the camera. Have a look at that. Right. No, what I mean is like this. I mean, right, let's see what we get. Right, spread it out a bit more. See, we're thinking of putting this through the compressor. If we just take big brushes, it might work Should better. Should we just be brushing it on? Yeah, because then we can actually control the tide lines a lot better. Yeah. Right, we'll be back. Change of plans. I think we're going to brush this on. Oh, fine brushes. See you in a sec. Right, so last time you've seen us, we were working on the wash. Mm -hmm. We spent like a, an afternoon putting the wash on. We've left it overnight to dry and we hate it. We failed. <laughs> it happens. We hate it, Justin. It happens. The you problem know. with the wash was, oh, there was a few problems, right? Mm -hmm. So we put it on, here you can see. So the reason we were brushing it on is because it was late at night and I couldn't leave the stuff outside to be drying. <laughs> so we thought, we'll bring it in, we'll brush it on, right? Yeah, and there's what we get. Right, that's a different problem. So this, this is it settling and you can actually see the brush strokes in it and there's another example, okay? Now one of the other things that was happening like on that bit where Justin just brought over. Yeah. Do you want to just bring that back? <sighs> it's way too heavy. Well, the original color was darker than I wanted it to be anyway, but we're going to press on. But what we were finding is as we were brushing it over, the acrylics that we'd been putting on with the compressor just weren't actually durable enough. Yeah, they were actually reactivating and lifting off. Now before I've, like times that I've done this before, I've used an actual rattle can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this time we had so much that we thought, oh, we'll try the compressor, see if we can keep the, yeah. keep, the, keep the cost down and stuff. But 
We lost the durability of an actual primer. Yeah. You might, f yeah. Yeah, because a primer, remember, will always kind of key. Your primer has... Well, it, um, it melts into it a little bit. Yeah, it, it has it's something in it to make it key into the actual thing, whereas this was just a layer of paint that was sitting across it. And also, we probably didn't give it the longest amount of time to dry and to... No, because it's boot camp time and yeah. we're trying to press it on through. Come on, right, you see this bit, right? Now, this bit pretty much reactivated mm. as the wash went down, so the acrylic just sort of came up. Funny thing is, that's kind of the effect we're after. Yeah, this is, these these two are closer right. to what your your effect that you were trying to get. Well, the problem is consistency. Look at the difference between that and that. Mm. So, and then we have a big bunch of them over here that are just bright. That didn't really get anything. Yeah. So, I came in later to have a look at them. And I thought, nah, <laughs> this won't do. This, this is all over the place. So I decided, sod it. We're gonna switch over and start using some spray cans. Mm -hmm. So last night I took some leather brown. Um, I think there's a skull bone over there, Justin, you can grab yeah, that. Yeah, I'll get you some bone, yeah. Uh, this was the actual matte primer, which I sprayed on some bits. Because I was going to experiment, if I put a bit of matte primer on it, would it reactivate? Yeah. It kind of a bit horse about face. Yeah. Because if you just use a good primer in the first place... We wouldn't have had this. So, yeah. we, we've decided, no, we're not really going to do the washing thing. What we're going to do is we're going to bring all the roots back to sort of matching. And Warren's come in this morning, you've been on looking at reference photos and stuff. Yes. So part of what we're doing is... Um, well, we call it. Some of the French stone um, has this, is this lovely kind of pale kind of colour. In fact, even French castles, and I'll take you over and show you, because one of the things that I want to do is to actually have one of the tables um, have the, the remnants of a ruined Norman fortress uh, kind of thing in it. Why? Because it's... Flipping cool is why. You know, Flames of War being played in and around a castle, awesome. But the color of this, um, we're going to match. So what we're actually going to do, at this point in time, we're thinking that we'll bring all the rural tables to this kind of color in its stonework, just to try and blend it all together, to give it a, a uniformity as if in this area of Normandy, this is basically the kind of stone they use. It happens all over the world. Cotswold stone in the Cotswolds yeah. and so, the like. So bring that bad boy over. You think the roads need to be a closer match to this? Uh, they need to be at least brown, okay? And a darker version of that. Okay, so with, with mud and stuff. Let's see, we've been mucking around with some sprays. We might go a bit more, a bit heavier on the skeleton bone. So yes. kind of there's what we had mm -hmm. yesterday. I don't know, hold on, maybe I'll bring that closer for you. So that was the majority of them turned out looking like that. And then we've been lightening it up to look yes. more like that. So you can see that versus that and that versus that. Less of a stark contrast. Yeah. We might go a bit heavier too with the skeleton bone on that. Yes. Right. But um, before we do anything else, I'm going to say let's cut the shapes of the roads out. Mm -hmm. I agree. Because that way we'll have a lot less material that we're trying to color match. Mm -hmm. And the other great thing with that is, here's another two examples that went through the wash yesterday. With the spray cans, it means once we put all the bits together we're going to use, we can actually use the spray can to and blend the over edges. spray the edges. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So as the two bits join up, because mm -hmm. I know it's a pee, it's a, pee, a pet peeve of yours to it's look at bits of root that joined, don't match. Yes. It's a root. I don't like to see the joints. So what I'm going to suggest is that we um, we have a few things that we're going to, we're going to be trying today. But um, let's let's get the roads cut out. Let's yep. see how they're going to look and reduce the amount of material volume that we're struggling with at uh -huh. the moment. Okay. okay? Yep. Get the roads laid out as quickly as we can, and then we can decide how much is this is going to be down to spray cans, how much of it is going to be down to potentially dry brushing, yep. and, and whether we want to have another go at using something like a fabric dye in clear, in, a, in, in like a floor polish, so as it draws back in yeah. and actually make the other thing uh, a, a proper wash. The other thing I was sink. thinking of, because we'll have a lot less mass mm -hmm. to work with, maybe we might even look at army paint or dip. Possibly. Because, because, the dip. Thing about, because the thing about dip is it'll draw into all the recesses and it gives it such a hard wearing surface. Oh, yeah. My problem with the roads a lot is of durability it'll be there. shiny though. We've well, got matte mat sprays. Yeah. My, well. my problem with the surfaces is if it's roads, people will be dragging miniatures and, and colors yeah, yeah. and things over the tanks. Yeah. Army painter dip could be absolutely yeah. the way to go. However, there is another hot tip. Whenever you're doing stuff that maybe isn't as fine as an army, yeah. you can use um, 
wood stain, um, a, a kind of like a wood varnish will do uh, something similar. So a tinted wood varnish, so, uh, I believe. It's really dark though. Yeah, so a dark right tinted uh, wood yeah. varnish might, the thing uh, is, might have the same, a similar effect. Well, the good the, thing is, as soon as we have cut out the rude shapes, We'll have scrap pieces we can test on. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. The thing is, we're paper based, so I don't want to keep putting too much moisture on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, the way the army painter stuff's kind of gloopy. Yes. It's not really going to soak into the material. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. Anyway, I think, I think, dip, let's get I cut. think dip, you know, with a medium tone dip, mm. a mid tone. Well, I let's think let's, let's get to cutting, and, and then we can figure yeah, out. Yeah, all mm -hmm. of that's for the next video. See you then.